In neuroscience, the most important property of our brain for happiness is neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity is actually a very interesting character of the brain. We, we didn't think that the brain changes until the 1970s, 1980s. We thought that you get a brain, it grows until 24, and then it's what you're left with for the rest of your life. Not true at all. Your brain behaves exactly like your muscles behave when you go to the gym. If you go to the gym every day and lift weights, you're going to look like a triangle. If you go to the gym every day and squat, you're going to look like a pear. Your brain is exactly the same. If you wake up every morning and watch the news, you're going to become very good at believing that the world is going to end. You're literally training your brain for that. If you wake up every morning and say, oh my God, I have so much amazing stuff in my life, you're going to be training your brain for gratitude. Scientists will say that new neurons that fire together wire together. So basically, think of it as the old times where you had the switchboard before the telecom industry became so uh, you know, automated. There was an operator where you dialed and said, I want to talk to Jonathan. And so she would patch you to Jonathan. After a while, you know, three days later, she realizes you only talk to Jonathan. So she basically keeps a permanent wire between you and Jonathan. That's neuroplasticity. If part of your brain is used frequently, it becomes a permanent configuration of your brain. Unhappiness is the biggest training we've given ourselves in, in, in the modern world. We're so good at finding things to be unhappy about. Scientists will say it will take you 21 days to remove a bit of the wiring and to feel a difference. In my case, sometimes it took up to four and a half years, but you have already made 80% of the progress to get to 100%. That idea of Becky, of my brain not being me, was a major, major game changer for me. I learned it from uh, Eckhart Tolle, uh, A New Earth. He calls it that voice in your head, the thinker. I don't know if you've heard of Eckhart Tolle's work. He's an incredible teacher, but he speaks very, slowly. So I think a, a new earth was 17 hours long. I don't remember, but it definitely felt like 17 hours long. Okay. So every time my brain would hijack me and try to convince me that it is me and I should listen to it. I promise you what I did was I listened to a new earth again from start to finish, normal speed. And about seven or eight times in my brain was like, that's it. I'm never going to do that again. I'm not you. I am Becky. I'm a horrible Becky. I'm never going to do that again. I always tell people it's an 80-20 rule. 80% of your unhappiness is probably due to one reason. It could be the illusion of control. It could be ego. Ego is not, in a bad way, not arrogance. It's, it's the way you want to be seen in the world. It could be the, your fear. Uh, it could be whatever. Okay. And my advice to people is find that one thing and make it your next 21 days. Find that one thing and consistently work on it until you rewire that thing. With 80% of the problems removed, the rest is so easy. So I've been having the time of my life for the last 12 years. Every two, two and a half years, I find a new thing and I go like, wouldn't it be nice if we painted this metallic and did this and that, you know, in my brain. And because the major problems are no longer there. Now, I, again, I'm not bragging, hmm? but the incessant thoughts in our brain that make us unhappy are one of the biggest reasons why we're constantly thinking about the negative. When I was writing Soul for Happy, I spoke about the idea of incessant thinking and so on. And so my, uh, my editor, which was a great editor, uh, Peter Guzardi, basically texted me one day and said, you know this incessant thinking thing, that's really good. The reader wants to know about this. Can you give us a few examples? And I promise you I'm not making this up. I couldn't come up with one. My brain had not thought incessantly for so long that I couldn't think of any. Actual example in the book is about Peter's daughter, teenage daughter, and how his teenage daughter is causing him incessant thinking. That's how far neuroplasticity can go. I don't think, by the way, I learned that as a happiness practitioner. I learned that as a business executive. When I was a business executive, 90% of my job was people walking in to complain. So I basically learned very, very quickly to not allow the incessant complaint to take more than 10 minutes of the meeting. Every time someone walked into the meeting and just complained, 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 I would give them 10 minutes. I would even pour some uh, you know, fuel on the fire so that they rage even more. And then I would go like, okay, okay, is there anything good about that relationship? For example, if they're complaining about the guys in legal when they are in sales, I go like, is there anything good? So trying to see the whole truth, is this true question? 
Okay? Can we do something about it the last 10 minutes? And that process very quickly ma made me learn to stop the incessant thought. Let's not just ramble in our heads about shit that doesn't do anything. When we've heard the brain, let's put our heads down and just get start to do something about it. That's how far neuroplasticity can go.